Okay, so today um, we're going to actually start into the designer's book. But before I do, there was a couple things and I can't find that link that I set up. I told Shannon about he, we were trying to figure out, um, okay, on Adobe XD, when you create your app, it creates a prototype that it'll be a live, you know, prototype that you can show to somebody. But um, there's also languages where that uh, are plugins to XD where that you can export the artboards directly into there. And if you want to develop it in a language or you want somebody else to, if you send them that XD prototype, it will work but it does not actually create the language. So I did a like a Google search. I said um, workflow for, cause I can't find that link now. Let me, let me see, where would that be? It might be in my history though, over here. Let's see if I can, I, I thought I put it on my Evernote. It's not showing up there. That would have been recently closed seven tabs. Let's see. No, that wasn't. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll find it. And there's a lot of different um, like languages that you can use to code apps in and there's a couple of plugins that it tells us for creating mobile let me see if this is how i found it <laughs> adobe i'm probably gonna have to Build your workflow in minutes. Design a mobile app with Adobe XD and Photoshop, part one and two. Here's app design with Adobe XD. And there's part two of the one with Photoshop. Hey, that's one you might like, uh, Shannon. Do you see this? Um, I'll put this on, uh, there's a link. It says parts one and two. Uh, Oops. Because you know Photoshop already. Design a mobile app with Adobe XD and Photoshop, part one of two. So anyway, there's, uh, let me go, let me find this. And I will put it in up here under resources. Let me go here to this here. Resources. Design. So the workflow for mobile app development using XD and Photoshop. Save. Okay, I put it under resources for designers if you've already started on XD and you want to see what you do next. But today we're going to start with the um, design book. And if you'll notice inside of Canvas, there's an assignment called proximity. And so we're going to go over the introduction and a little bit of um, uh, the chapter on proximity so that you'll be ready to complete that assignment. And XD, you should be going through at least lesson two. Let's see, probably I have it written out. I'll go back over there and see how much you have to have done by next week. Okay, so um, this is called the Joseph Tree Epiphany. Many years ago, I received a tree identification book for Christmas. I was at my parents home and after all the gifts had been opened i decided i would identify the trees in the neighborhood 
Before going out, I read through some of the identification clues and noticed that the first tree in the book was the Joshua tree because it only took two clues to identify it. Now, the Joshua tree is a really weird looking tree and I looked at that picture and said to myself, oh, we don't have that kind of tree in Northern California, that is a weird looking tree. I would know if I saw that tree and I've never seen one before. So I took my book and went outside. My parents lived in a cul-de-sac of six homes. Four of those homes had Joshua trees in the front yards. I had lived in that house for 13 years and I had never seen a Joshua tree. I took a walk around the block and there must have been a sale at the nursery when everyone was landscaping their new homes. So at least 80% of the homes had Joshua trees in the front yard. So I had never seen one. Once I was conscious of the tree, once I could name it, I saw it everywhere, which is exactly my point. Once you can name something, you're conscious of it, you have power over it, you're in control and you own it. So the reason she brought this up at the very beginning here is that these basic four principles that we're going to be applying all semester and it only probably if you've been in art class that you've talked about these four basic design principles before, we're going to be able to name them when we see certain designs, when we go out to the internet and we see a website, we're gonna pick out, okay, that one has good proximity, that one has good contrast. So we're gonna know these because we can name it. And that's what she's saying, you might, have been looking at it all the time when you look at a website and know, hey, I like that website, but you don't name those design principles, so you don't really know if they're there, you just know aesthetically you like it, okay? So we're gonna learn how to actually make sure that our designs have these uh, principles in everything we design, whether it's a newsletter, whether it's a graphic, whether it's a website, whether it's an app. So when you create your final project at the end of, end of the semester, that's gonna be a lot of the rubric is, are those four design principles implemented in your design? So here is um, a, a um, little, I think it's a postcard or something like that typefaces that are used, Times New Roman. And what you'll find out if you've listened to any of those videos in proximity, Robin Williams tells you, don't use Times New Roman. Everybody uses Times New Roman. And that is the oldest font there is. And so is there ever a case to use it? Well, I guess if you're creating printed documents, you can, because that particular font is a serif font. What do I mean? What's a serif font? Do I know what a serif and a non-serif font is? You will by the end of the semester. Do you know, Shannon? No? Can we do that? It's not too common, one of the three common fonts are... Well, most of the common ones, there are some sans serif, and they're sans, who knows Spanish? What sans mean? Not serifs. So a serif, is these little tails that you see on fonts. So if a font has a tail as opposed to this font, which does not, then it's called, this one's called sans serif, like Arial, Helvetica, uh, Verdana. Those are ones that are called sans serif fonts with no tails. And when did that come about? When you had only printed documents, you didn't have a computer monitor and you typed on an old typewriter, they were all Times New Roman. Because when you look at something in print, like if you look even in your textbook here, when the print up here, this text, is it serif or, or sans serif? Can you see it? What do you think? Is that serif or sans serif? Serif because it has tails, right? It's Times New Roman, because this book is a printed document, right? So anything, most of the time when you see print, you're gonna see Times New Roman, because theoretically, it's supposed to be easier to read than the sans serif. 
So sans serif fonts became popular when we started doing more ebooks and screen design because on a monitor, on a screen, it's really easier to read sans serif fonts. Okay, so that's when that started happening. But now you see a lot of printed material this way also. It just depends what kind of feel you're trying to get across when you design a specific document. So we're gonna have actually a whole chapter on typefaces because that's important. You can relay a lot of expression through the type of font that you use. And so that's why that's something as graphic designers, you may think, well, that's not graphics. Well, that's very much graphics. You're gonna to get to see how you can design, uh, you know, fonts are things that some people spend their whole life creating different ones because there's thousands out there on the web, right? Some of them you have to buy, some of them are free. So when you work for a specific company, they may have their own company fonts that will brand them. And that's something that, that you're gonna learn throughout this two year degree too. And, it, and like, uh, if you've already had, who else in here has had other classes that is part of your degree besides Shannon? Okay, what class did you have, Tay? Um, I'm are you taking it right now? Yeah. What are you taking? I'm taking Photoshop? Photoshop? Um, yeah, Digital imaging is, is called, is Photoshop. What are you taking, Elizabeth? This semester, and did you have others before, or is this your first semester? Oh, you did? Okay. So, anybody else taking any kind of illustration or things? Okay, so in that those programs, you might have learned some of this, like in Photoshop, you're gonna learn to use text, but, and they may go over some of these design principles and in Illustrator, but you don't usually zero in on that, you're learning to use the software. So in this class, it's very important that you learn these principles because when you apply them, it makes your design project more marketable, more pleasing to the eye. And not everyone likes the same kind of design. And so we used to have an instructor when I first started teaching in multimedia digital design, and she was from the art department, but she um, had an eye for, I mean, she had been a professional artist too. And so she used to teach our advanced um, digital imaging too. And she could see, you know, she had a certain eye for what was really creative and what really made your art your art worthwhile where i'm not an artist i don't come from an artist background i don't pretend to be so there's things that i give you a little bit more leeway on to use your creativity and if you can explain to me why you didn't use proximity in a certain place because you liked this then that's what i want to know i want to know that you are actually controlling your design and not just throwing things out there Okay, so we're gonna learn about it and then you'll see how to apply it. So good design is as easy as learn the basic principles. They're simpler than you think. Recognize when you're not using them, put it into words, name the problem, apply the principles, be amazed. So here's some um, different kinds of fonts here. Brandon, these that are used up here in this document that we just saw are Brandon, and grotesque black, it says. <laughs> That's two of the typefaces. So train your designer eye. So we're gonna find at least five differences to make the second example communicate more clearly. Clearly, And what you'll notice in this book, I used to give you some of these as um, assignments, but all of, like these suggestions, people were just copying them, so I don't do that anymore because <laughs> they're in the back of your book. So it says suggestions for the differences. But before you look at those differences, let's see what we can find. What is one difference in this one versus this one that, that I just talked about? What's different? 
That's one. What'd you say? Spacing. Spacing is different. So that's going to be the proximity. What else is different? There's one. The font is different. We talked about the font. There's two. What's another one? Color. That's three. Let's see. What else? We haven't talked about this principle yet. Why does this one look like this? And this one looks like that. What's that called? Pardon? Sure. Proximity. That's another one. That was where he said the, the closeness of it. Okay. What else? How, how is the one, two, and three? And then there's not one, two, and three, but you don't need it because in this one, it is the L, R, and A are all, they're, they're bolded. That's good. That's contrast. That's a principle you saw as contrast. Okay, there's one more. Has anybody looked ahead at what the four basic principles? What's one of them? Repetition. Repetition. What did we repeat? We repeated bold. the bold. Okay. One more, there's one more principle that we haven't, haven't said. And I'm trying to show you this line right crap. here. All crap. It's all crap. So what's the A stand for? Now, and, and what he's talking about is we have, and I'm going to do it with my, oh, where's my notes? Does it not have stickies? Let me see if it does. Because I have this on. Sticky that. Okay, so, oops, I'm going to open a note. Okay, so we have, instead of putting it on the board, because I want it on my video, I'm going to do this here. Okay, so we have C, R, A, P, those are the acronyms. That's how the word starts. Okay, the first one, one of the ones that I gave you was contrast. The R was what Shannon said, repetition. What's the A? Alignment. That's the one that I was trying to get. Alignment. And then we talked about proximity already. Okay, so you see the difference in the alignment here? This one is center aligned, right? This one is left aligned, right? So we took the bullets off and we left aligned it and then you can see it a lot easier. But a lot of people in old style, they always thought they should center align everything. So you very seldom want to center align, okay? That's, that's a lot harder to read there. You do have the boldness here but you don't have the how easy it is laid out here to read. We also changed the style here with the, the italics, right? Okay, let's see what they what their suggestion was. On page 225 in your book, let's see if we missed any. It tells you that the suggestions that she has for the differences and let's see train the designer i removed the border that was crowding the edges so we didn't talk about that used a stronger typeface whose bold has a bigger impact on the page that's the principle of contrast repeated the bold which is the principle of repetition um, and gave the text strong alignments which is the principle of alignment separated the three steps which is the principle of proximity. So you see, you were actually seeing all those principles and now you know the names for them, all right? So that's what we're gonna be looking for. So here they are, contrast, repetition, repeat visual elements of the design throughout the piece. You can repeat color, shapes, textures, special relationships, line thicknesses, font sizes, graphics, concepts, et cetera. Alignment and proximity is items relating to each other should be grouped close together. 
Um, when distilling these four principles from the vast maze of design theory, and here's where she said, good communication is as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard to sleep after. Although, if you're in college and you drink a lot of coffee, you probably don't have any problems sleeping after, right? I don't anymore. <laughs> it doesn't do much good. But, okay, so here is a typeface that they used to really make some memorable, memorable uh, <laughs> lasting things. And this is where she says that she created the rather inappropriate acronym that we just looked at, right? Inappropriate, but uh, we use it to remember. All right. So this is actually chapter two, and this is what your assignment is gonna be on proximity. In the work of new designers, the words and phrases and graphics are often stung out all over the place, filling corners and taking up lots of room so there won't be any empty space. And have you ever seen that? Have you ever went to a web page and there was so much on it that you didn't know where to start? You ever seen ones like that? Used to, if, if, you're, if you don't see it now, when in 95, when I started in web design, HTML01, that happened or they had all this blinking stuff everywhere because they learned how to write blinking lines of code in HTML and things were really ugly. But now people are learning what it is that causes people to come back to their website. Um, and also, you know, a lot of people are even using their Facebook accounts as marketing for their web for their businesses and so they have to be using a lot of good design in there too so there's all kinds of design besides the aesthetic design but what we learned in social media marketing and what you will if you haven't taken that course in digital marketing is that the design of where things are located on a website really are important to help market it so the principle of proximity states group related items together move them physically close to each other so the related items are seen as one cohesive group so here a very simple example below illustrates this concept that's the principle of proximity on a page as in life physical closeness implies a relationship so here you're not sure if they're related but here they're getting ready to hold hands so you know they know each other, right? Or pretty much, you know that. Now, the proximity of these two people makes it clear there is some sort of relationship between them. The same thing happens on the page. So if you see an old um, uh, business card, sometimes words fly out of my head, um, a business card, this is what, some of the old ones look like. They thought the further away you put everything, it'd be easier to read. Does your eye stop five times? Of course, there are five separate items on this little card. Where do you begin reading? In the middle, probably, because that phrase is the boldest. What do you read next? Do your eyes move left to right? What happens when you get to the bottom right corner? Where does your eye go? Do you wander around? So you want, when you create, a document or a graphic you want to know that you're in control of what the user is going to see so you want to to control the narrative here so we don't like them to go from here I guess to here do you start in the upper left does your friend follow the same pattern you did when several items are in close proximity to each other, they become one visual unit rather than several separate units. So as in life, the proximity or the closeness implies a relationship. So let's look. Here's another way to do it. That here they changed the font. Uh, no, I guess they didn't change the font they changed just the proximity. So they put the address and phone number all together, which makes a little bit more sense, right? Those things all relate to each other. And here's the name of the company, and that must be the owner. Now, is there any question about where you begin to read the card? No, you begin at the top and go to the bottom, right? So that 
is important because you have control of where the, the person that looks at that, where they are visually starting. So the use of proximity can be a subtle yet important thing. Always question whether elements are close to the elements they belong with. Watch for the elements that have inappropriate relationships. And these are some of the things, areas of expertise. So all of these are grouped together. Notice the bullets in these two columns and how far away they are. Look, the proximity, have you ever had that happen when you're typing and they're that far away and you don't know how to fix it? Well, in programs like InDesign, you can fix it. Uh, you don't have as much control in Word unless you're just a guru with Word. So here, this looks much nicer than where they're up here with all the space in between, right? So now the relationships are clarified. We can instantly see to which point each bullet belongs. We can instantly see that there are two columns of bulleted points rather than a column of bullets, some info and a column of bullets and more information. Now I realize you could read it like this and you would know that they belong together, but it looks much nicer this way. So here's another one. The numbers appear to be a unit of their own, unrelated to the text. This looks better, right? So when the numbers are closer to the information, we see the relation of the numbers to the text. So that's a, a good thing to remember. Okay, so let's look at this business card. This, or post, this is a postcard, it says, is visually boring. Nothing pulls your eyes into the body copy to take a look, except perhaps the two hearts. But just as importantly, it takes a moment to find the critical information. So what if we had something like that? That makes you look at the title and the information is grouped better and then they just use the heart as a watermark. So without doing much else, yes, it does need more. See pages 82 and 83 simply grouped related elements into units and providing appropriate space between the units makes the information more accessible. So find at least eight small differences that help to make the second example appear a wee bit more professional. Okay, there's eight things they did from this one to this one. So instead of going through them all, we're gonna look and see what they say. There's at least four principles. What did they do? What one do you see there that's contrast? What did they do to change the contrast from here to here? What'd they do? What makes it more contrast? What is contrast? The, the difference between like they have the hearts bolded here and the text bolded. So here to create a little more contrast, they left the, this bolded, but they made this a watermark, right? So it's not in line, not the same bold. And they made also all of this text different, um, different boldness too. This was all the same here, even though this was a little bolder. So they changed that in the contrast. Okay, what about repetition? Do you see any repetition here? They didn't repeat the, the graphics. Do you see any repetition? No? Anybody see repetition? What about the boldness here and here? That's repeated. Um, there is no graphics repeated, so there's not as much repetition. Then what's the next one? Alignment. What'd they change on the alignment? Anybody see? Alignment. What changed in the alignment between the top one and this one? Look at this compared to this. They changed how it was aligned, right? Yeah, I Pardon? Are they both centered? They're both, no. Be, well, it's centered on the document, but look at how this one, the, um, they changed the order of this. So they grouped, so the proximity changed. They grouped this with this. 
They are both centered, but how did it change? Oh, like they aligned these two together because they had to do with, um, you know, they left aligned it. Let's see, we'll go back and see exactly how she stated it. There's like eight things. So let's see what it says here. It'll let me skip there. So where's that one is, let me see. Oh, these are the quizzes. Let me find it. There it is. Title is larger. The rest of the type is smaller. The three services are on three individual lines. They related elements, the related elements are grouped together. Capitalize the words in the email and web address so they are easier to read. Got rid of the extra heart. So there she's not having you give the suggestions as defined by those principles. She just said to find eight differences. Lighten the heart so it doesn't compete with the text. Enlarge the heart and overlap it with the text to integrate it. So on those instructions, I didn't read them correctly because she didn't want the principles. Oops. So where did I go back to? Let's see, let me go back. Okay, so here's another one that she wants you to go through. The idea of proximity doesn't mean that everything is closer together. It means elements that are intellectually connected. So it doesn't mean to just put everything together, but if they are intellectually connected, those that have some sort of communication relationship should also be vis visually connected. Other separate elements or groups of elements should not be in close proximity. The closeness or lack of closeness indicates the relationship. So you see, this is a lot easier to read and they grouped the things that were, were um, related in communication together. Here's one, the winter's tale. So here's, here's Symboline. So they're talking about different um, readings that they're doing. And so instead of just having them all centered down the page, they have them grouped by the reading, which is much easier to read. So you can decide which one you want information on. So here's in the list below on the left side, what do you assume about all those flowers? Probably that they have something in common, right? In the list below right, what do you assume? It appears that the last three flowers are somehow different from the others. So you understand this instantly and you understand it without even being conscious of it. Because when you see this one as opposed to this one, these three are in proximity, right? And these are in pro close proximity. So you know there's some relationship between these three and some relationship between these here. So the spacing arrangement is important. So here's another list. Everything is close to everything else, so it is difficult to see the relationships or the organization, even with the headings in bold. So they're all, you don't know what it's talking about there. So here's the same list. Let's see if I can find. Is this the, oh, wait a minute. The same list has been visually separated into groups by adding a little space. Oh, this is still talking about this one. It is critical that you learn to use the paragraph space before and after settings in your software, which is how you can apply exactly the amount of space between elements in a text block. Above, I tighten the leading, or it, that's called letting actually. Anybody familiar with letting and kerning? What does that mean? It's in, in design. Okay, one of them is the space between the line. The other is the space between characters. And normally, like when you're just using Microsoft Word, your characters are all the same distance apart. And there's a font called monospaced. What's mono mean? One. So that means that every single character in that font takes the identical amount of space. So whether you have an M or the letter I capital, they both take the same amount of space in a monospaced font. And so you can control that in InDesign. You can, dis you can tell uh, different letters 
to take more space, you can create a wider space or a narrow space between characters. That's kerning. Letting is the exact amount, like say maybe you want more than single space, but you don't want double space. Maybe you want 1.3 space between lines. You can do that by adjusting what's called the letting. Um, okay, uh, that's what she did in some of these others. Take a moment to decide which items should be grouped into closer proximity and which should be separated. So in this book, even though the acronym CRAP, we actually, the first one she talks a lot about is proximity. And so the two items in the top right corner are in close proximity to each other, right up here, implying a relationship. But should those two have a relationship? Below, more appropriate relationships have been established. So you'll notice there's the website and there's the, the actual book volume. So that's locations. So that's why they're grouped together. And this tells you kind of uh, is a, uh, what do you call those, a tagline? And that's not what it's called, something like that. So here's the title, and then here's the taglines here. Instead of having them separated here, and the May 1st in the volume separated, so that she went in and made the proximity better. So you're probably already using the principle of proximity in your work, but you may not be pushing it as far as you could to make it truly effective. Really look at the elements and see which items should be grouped together. So here's another one that she did differently and she made the picture larger. See how she grouped those? So um, she tells you how she did it. Here's another example. So you need to go through these because in your uh, assignment, you're gonna take, I think it's this one. And I'm not actually having you create the document in the first one on proximity. I'm just having you go over, let me look at the assignment. The, you look at, what you do is in this discussion, you will read the introduction in chapter two on proximity, which we've covered today. In the non-designers book, you will need to do the following before class, which I, I didn't have you do it before class, but these are her videos that talk about what we just covered in class. Once you have watched, so you don't have to watch the videos, but she explains them. We're gonna watch this last one because I didn't cover this last one. So let's see how the principle of proximity, aided by your paragraph space before and after, can transform the communication of any piece. Now this designer hit two returns after each headline and after each paragraph. So the headlines are the same distance from the paragraph above as they are from the paragraph below. So it's not instantly clear if there's a connection between these headlines and the body copy. You can't tell if the headline belongs to the text above it or the text below it because the distances are the same. There's lots of white space available in here, but see how it's all broken up and all these pieces all over the place, especially between these two elements that belong together. So when white space is trapped, like between the headline and the body copy, it tends to visually push the elements even farther apart. By grouping elements into closer proximity, it deletes wasted space and helps to organize that space. Look at that white space now. Well, it's nice and cleaner. We were able to make the graphics so much bigger. But the important, the most important thing is that now the headlines belong to their body copy. Headline body copy. The communication is instantly clearer because of the proximity of the related elements. The white space is not trapped. There's more room on the page. The contact info is on separate lines so we can read it, grouped together and separated, so it'll stand out as an important element. Now, as usual, I did a few other things along the way. I said everything slush and lap. Oh, look at that nice alignment. Lining it up here, gathered up all the white space into a more organized element itself. I deleted 
these words email web we know what an email address is when we look at it we don't have to be told we know what a web address is i eliminated this little um the semicolon the slash things we don't need get rid of anything you do not need on the page i set this in a little brighter color i put shakespeare in lowercase so it's easier to read and put the focus on the headline of close reading and with all this space that i cleaned up i was able to make the image much larger so it acts as the focal point all those things happen because we're broken things into proximity so here's a similar but more complex example and this is an actual menu that a waiter let me have and you can see it's really hard to find what you want to eat the problem here, one that you might think is really obvious, is there's no differentiation between the items on the menu. It takes a lot of work to figure out what to eat. The first thing you need to do with this is get rid of the all caps. They make everything more difficult to read. Then figure out what belongs together. Use the spacing features in your software to visually separate the elements. Oh, look, it looks better already. So I separated the individual items of space using the principle of proximity. And you can see that I also did other little things. I gave Gertrude a nice font for her title. Um, I changed all those all caps to lowercase, initial caps. I removed the underlines and the subheads. Never, I'm really, I mean never, use the default underline feature in your software. It's a leftover typewriter editing clue that tells the typesetter to set the words in italic. Just don't do it. I set the names of the dishes in bold and the text in regular. That's something you would do automatically. But we could go a little farther with this. Since there's more room in the width of this page than there is in the height, because it is, I'm trying to keep it within the same menu size. I indented from the left to differentiate between the two sections. Again, that's proximity because we're working with the space here. It's all about space. The principle of proximity helps you focus on space and what it can do for communication. Made the description a little smaller, which not only makes the communication clearer because I can see more clearly that it's a descriptive element for the menu item. But it becomes more visually appealing because it's not so crowded. With the extra space, I can make the restaurant name bigger. I changed the color of the text to something darker, making it easier to read. But let's do a couple more things. Get rid of Times New Roman. It's the default font in many applications, and so it's so trite and overused, especially at 12 point five. Please don't ever use Times New Roman. 12 point with double space. Ever, ever again. <laughs> For the menu items, I chose a menu more interesting than times, not hard to do. With a good Sam Serif family, I could put the menu item in a good strong bold and the description in the lighter form. Of course, we have to get rid of those hyphens that were in front of the numbers. We're going to line the numbers up. Oh, that's alignment. Not only is the menu more appealing, it appears more professional, it communicates more clearly, and the food probably tastes better. So rarely is the principle of proximity the only answer to a design project. The other three principles are intrinsic, and you'll find yourself using all four, but take them one at a time. Start with proximity. All the other principles mean nothing if you don't first develop the appropriate fixing. Okay, so on this discussion, what it says down here, number two, or I'm sorry, number three, select from one of these deliverables from internet, papers, presentations, or other items that you might have or have observed and have access to get a photo of the item. So you are to get either an ad, website, resume, term paper, PowerPoint presentation, spreadsheet, graph, show an image of the, the deliverable, one of these types of items, 
that you will be analyzing and then use the principle of proximity as defined by the author. And number five, list three characteristics that you would change and or that display effective proximity in that item you chose. You can choose an item that either is really bad, like that menu she showed, and or you can choose an item that you can describe why the proximity is great. Next, you need to comment on two other classmates' discussions, okay? So you need to say, hey, that was a good idea, or tell them what else you saw, but you, can all, you only have to concentrate on the proximity. So you need to get, um, pick one that you see three characteristics when you analyze it that show the principle of proximity and list those in the discussion. And so this discussion is what worth um, 15 points. So you get five points for each characteristic, right? So pick one of these type of items. And I see Tay's already done hers and Shannon. Okay, so you're gonna be graded on if you chose three characteristics. I'm sorry, that will be worth 10 points and five points is if you went ahead and responded to two of your classmates. If only two are out there right now, you may have to wait. The date is due, what does it say? August 26th, next Monday, okay? So that is your for sure assignment that has to have something posted here. Any questions over that assignment? Okay, so now let's go over to the um, XD and see if there's any, any questions there. We'll go to where we should have downloaded our lesson files. And if you're working on this Mac, then what you might wanna do if you, XD you notice, if you're on your laptop, you can download XD free. It's not even just a trial version, XD is free. And that's what we're gonna be using in this class. When you sign on here, you sign on with your Adobe ID, right? So if you wanna use Photoshop or Illustrator or any of those on these computers, you have to have an o Adobe ID that you sign in with. You don't have to pay for that as long as you're using the ones in here, okay? So when you, when you go through the, the lessons, you need to go through the lessons on XD. So the first one, let me go up here where, um, I think William, did you get your lessons downloaded? Is that what you did? That's what I did, yes. Okay, so there's a zip file that will have all of the lessons. I've put them right here on my laptop, uh, not laptop, on my desktop here. So all the lessons are here. And so when we start with the, the web edition, let me, I didn't bring my book up here, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna open that web edition. Let's see here. Well, I can actually open it up here, but I was gonna do the XD up here. So remember when we went to the web edition, I went to Peach Pit and you put your, um, you register, at Peach Pit, well, here I can do it up here first so that everybody remembers how to get their lesson files. Um, so if we go to peachpit.com, you do have to create a sign on at Peach Pit. And in the front of your book, even if you've, if you only bought the web edition, then this is how you do it. You still should have, um, the when you bought it a register code to be able to download the lesson files oh it's a little bit slow come on so i'm going to slash Oops, that didn't work. Uh, 
Okay, so when you get to this website, you have to create a login. I'm still logged in here. This is my account. So I can click on my account. And here it shows me my registered products. And here says access bonus content. And that's where your lesson files are. So you would click here and that gives you your lesson files for XD. I'm not going to download them again. They're in a zipped file and when you unzip the file, it should um, uh, take you to each individual folder like what I had, but I'm going to go into the web edition so you can click launch. Oops, what I do? And I can't. Trying to get that up here so that I can go into XD over there. So we opened this up last time and we went through some of the workspace and how um, to do certain things because there's videos there. We stopped here and it says with the L1 start.xd project file open on Mac OS, you'll see the default XD workspace. If you're on Windows, proceed to the next section. So choose view, zoom to fit to see everything. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to my lesson files. Open. And if I double click this, it should open up lesson one in XD for me if I'm logged into XD. And here's what it looks like. Now on my, um, oops, let me get to these different ones. Must be okay. That's the wrong one. On introduction. Okay. So on this one, I was down to what page is that on? I was going to go over here. Okay, there it is. I think. Okay. So first, it tells me in my XD. Let me close this out. This is just showing you how to get around in XD. And so the file that they opened already had all this in it. You didn't have to create it, it already has it in it. If I want to see it all on the screen, I can always do the um, zoom to fit. And you'll notice here, it has all of the different, um, it tells you what everything is on the web edition. A is the menu bar. So the menu bar is up here. Here's um, the application modes, whether you're in design or prototype. Prototypes when you're finished and you want to play it and you see it turns into what you have here and you can click and it works. That's what the prototype does. It should um, actually let you slide over, I believe. I don't know if these buttons all work yet, but it did let me slide. See, these will eventually, it shows you that it has six screens. So this is what they've got developed so far. Record options, enable microphone, show notifications. So this is what they've created so far. All right, so the Adobe XD Windows interface includes a menu icon that you can click to show menu items, see the next section. So here's all the, the things that, um, the, what the menu bar, the application modes, the toolbar, the property inspector. Adobe XD uses artboards, and we talked about this last time. The pasteboard is the gray area around the artboards, all this area. Access the layers panel and assets panel. They're located at the bottom. This is where the, um, and, and of course, it always gives you a tool tip right there. There's the assets. Here's the layers panel. So you'll notice this panel changes. And these are all the layers that are in this particular file that you opened up. There's a memory layer, high detail, countdown one, countdown two, countdown three. These are all the layers. So if you're familiar with Photoshop or with, um, in, not InDesign, Photoshop or Illustrator, they both have layers. So most Adobe products have layers. And layers are like in the old time when you would copy their transparency papers that are laid up on top of the bottom one and whatever's on top is the latest one that you see. 
Okay, so if we keep where is that? Where is that? Which where's what? Which part? Like page that you're in. This right here or the page of the book? The page of the book right there. This one? Yeah. Okay, that's in the web edition. Are you have you do you have it open? Oh, in the book. Uh let's see, what page number is that? That's still in the getting started section. But see, you have actually the web edition up there too. When you went in and registered your product. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I did. Like if you get to where's this at? Let me go up here. Registration. Okay, then it will say launch. It should say launch. I just put in my book. If you go over uh, at the peachpit.com site. Okay, so you registered. So now go back to go back one. Okay, now see where the, the link is? Now go up there. Now click on that. Oh, that gets you to where you buy it. This is the location. You should have the location. All I did was have a coding. You can register. Okay, let's go to the website. No, I didn't do that. You can go. Oh yeah, you're, this is in here, but they have the video. Here it is, web edition of an online unit at the Okay, the web edition will appear under the digital purchases tab on the right page. There it is, right there. Okay. And then the reason everybody would like the web edition is because it has the videos. Does anyone else have trouble finding that launch button? Because if you haven't bought the book yet, you won't be able to get the web edition either. Okay, so here's if you're on Windows, there's how you um, find the workspace. So we're going to work in design mode, getting to know the tools, and those videos really help. That's why I don't go over all of this in class. But um, these, these are the tools, and it tells you each one of them. But of course, when you're in Adobe XD, the tools, when you go back to the tools section, let me go back to the assets. Uh, where do my tools go? Oh, design mode. You have to be in design mode. I was still in prototype. Okay, so if you're in prototype mode, you see the design tools go away. But in design, here are the tools, and there should be tool tips come up. So that really is helpful. There's a rectangle, the ellipse, the polygon, the line, the pen, the text tool the art board, so if you want to create a new art board, which each one of these are also art boards. And there's the search, or I'm sorry, the zoom tool. So if I want to zoom this up, you see, I can zoom it. I can also go up here, and then I should be able, oops, uh, let me find the one that, To be able to yeah i can move it around i can that one that actually copied duplicated that but you can play around with it and get familiar with all the different tools move the pointer over the select tool notice that the name select and keyboard shortcut are displayed in a tool tip now the property inspector is just like you have for all the other Adobe apps. And that's another reason that we start with XD is because when you get in your other classes, these are all going to become more familiar. You'll see that Photoshop has more tools, a whole lot more tools, as does Illustrator. So if you know how to use those, <clears throat> you can create your logo for your mobile app, say in Illustrator, at the end when we start working on the final project and you can import it into your design. 
So the property inspector is this over here. So when you have a certain object selected, then the properties have to do with that one object. And over here, it shows you its alignment. You can change the alignment of it, but it's just showing you some things about the property inspector in this chapter. See right here, most of the content in the property inspector changes depending upon what is selected. If there's nothing selected, then the property inspector is dimmed. So how do you tell NXD if something's selected? Is this one selected? See how my property inspector is no longer grayed? But if I click out here in the pasteboard, it's grayed out because I don't have any objects selected. So if I select over here, my properties changed because I have this object selected. So that's true in any, any of the pieces of software, graphic software that you work with. Now these are, this is something that is in that, if I can find that link that I had the other day, all the different plugins that you can actually install in XD and work with. So those are tools that you might already know how to use. Like if you wanna put icons and symbols in that are already part of this, there's over 5,000 icons, then you can install that and you'd be able to use icons in XD that have, instead of just dragging one in at a time, it has a bunch of them. Confetti, <laughs> that'll let it fly out. You know, whenever you click on a button and you want it to be, have confetti in your app, then you could have that as a plugin. So those are different things you can do. Okay, so the rest of this one, see it has the interactive questions to see if you actually know what you just read. Working with panels, you can also press Command Y on the Mac or, or Control Y on Windows to toggle between the layers panel open and closed. So what that's saying is if I do Command Y, it opened the artboards panel. If I do Control Y again, it'll shut it if I want more space in my um, area, in my artboard area. So you can learn the shortcuts and it's a little faster sometimes for some people than doing that, having to bring your mouse to where your panel's icon is. So you learn uh, shortcuts that help you. You can also press Command Shift Y to toggle the assets panel. So if you want, to not have to go back and forth with the mouse there, you can do that. With When either the layers or assets panel is showing, you can drag the right edge of the panel to the right to expand the panel area. So if it's hard to see, you can do that. Now that's everything that they covered up to now has been the design mode. Then they go in and there's the video here to cover the prototype mode. And I'm kind of skipping over this because we're about done today, but this is a part that you need to go over several times until you're familiar because before you, if you know these things, before you start working with it, it'll make it a lot easier, but some of you just click around and figure it out. That's fine if that's how you learn. So that's um, what this section is going to tell you about the prototype. And so then two tells you to start the lesson, Here's what you're gonna create and save a document, and you're going to create and edit artboards, add grids to artboards, manage artboards with layers. And so at the end, what you'll wanna do is at the end of your lesson two folder, you don't have anything that you save in lesson one, but in lesson two, it has you do, oh, this is the end one. Does yours have the end one in there? Hmm. That's not the one that, does yours have the end one in lesson two instead of the start? Do you have lesson two, who has lesson two folder? Anybody else have lesson two folder? I did, I did so I had lesson one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see. Yeah, it does have the end one here. Okay, so 
what I want you to do is like, this is the one in lesson three that you start with. And then it has you do some things and create this with lesson three end. So you need to get to, it shows you what you're supposed to get to at the end of lesson three. But you, when, so when you work through starting with the start one, this is the L3 one. So at the end of, let me see. Yeah, lesson 11 does not have an end one. Let me see if lesson 10. And lesson 10. So when you get further along, they don't show you what it's supposed to look like. And through lesson nine, they do. Let me see. What oh, I do have lesson nine to 11. Okay. So this one, let me see what it does. That one doesn't go any further, though. It'll let you, it should let you go back. Okay. So as you work through those, I'm, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to decide what I'm going to have you post up so I know that you've done them. But actually, the answers are in there. So that, this whole part is so that you'll be able to do your, um, your final project because you have to be able to know how to use XD. So start working through them. Let me see in, let me see what I say that has to be done by. That feels like you're making a website out of software. Yeah, it, you can make a website out of it. You can do a website or a mobile app. There's a lot of different, um, okay, where'd that go? Okay, this is the proximity that's due. And then I told you to, oh, come on. Adobe, that's the intro. Let me see what this says. Was there anything due? You will not. Yeah, lessons one and two should be completed by the end of the week. Intro, okay, and I didn't get to Canva yet, but um, okay. So by next Monday, you need to have done lesson one and lesson two, but I actually don't have you put anything in a, in a submit assignment except for the proximity one. So at the end, when we will have finished, I think that will be the final lessons will be right here in week six. So And so that's when when you will actually submit something that have to do with the lessons. But if you don't do them along the way, you're going to have a hard time being done by week six. So do lessons one and two by Monday and this proximity assignment. Okay. Any questions? Everybody okay? Is uh, Adobe XD in charge of like that's just the, no, that's the instruction. That's what we did. Anytime you see um, in Canvas a little page at the top of the week, this right here, this is going to tell you an overview of what we do this week. Okay. Um, now, you all may not be able, are you able to see this on yours? Because it. I have a prerequisite of start here. So if you haven't checked all the start here, it may not let you do it. Let me go to student. Are y'all able to see that? I'm looking at the Let me look at student view. My student view says you can see them all. You just cannot click on them if you have not done something with start here. That's what it is. It won't let you click on them. It lets you click on that one. Supposed to be if there's a prerequisite, that's what I was trying to get to. Yeah, I've clicked on all those, so you should be able to see them up through week four. Okay, if you have any trouble, just let me know because it's time for class to be over. I know some of you have another class. So, and I did also, um, okay, right here, I went ahead and put um, our lecture from Monday. And this link, this YouTube link, will um, the next day have all of uh, in a separate playlist all the ones from this class so if there's anything that you want to look at and scan back and forth you don't have to watch the whole thing so all of these videos will be there at that 
link that is, let me go here and see if I've got the right one, that I put the YouTube link somewhere. I thought I did. I can read me first. It's probably in there. So the two working ones I have to do is Adobe XD intro and Biops submitting. The getting started and the um, lessons and the lesson two. So it's lesson folder one and lesson folder two in the book, in your XD book. See how that intro says, um, it, it just tells you which lessons to do. If you click on that intro, it says com complete the proximity discussion. We will also start the Adobe XD lessons. And so lessons one and two should be completed by the end of the week. See that? That's what that intro will always give you the instructions of what we did that week. And what's due. Okay, if I have time, then I'm Come back here. I can, I can do it one time. Right, right. Okay. Because, but, because it's a lot easier that way. I can try to understand more. Okay. So you mean Monday? Monday and Wednesday. I'll be being yeah, because those should be done by next Monday. So you either need to come here when we're not in class to finish one and two or do them at home, one of the two. It's a lot better doing it in here okay then you'll need to come back here because you won't be able to get it all done in class okay all right you guys are free to go unless you want uh, there isn't a class there is a class here on wednesday after this class but not on monday after this class oh, yeah. uh, jan maybe jan for everyone out for herself too to get to her okay she's, right. being official. she's being official okay halfway down the you figured out XD then? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, uh, did you see that video? That, I don't know if that'll help you. Not yet. What, I, look I and see if it that. will. Okay. No, I mean to, after you get the prototype, if you wanted to do something with it after that. Dreamweaver? Uh, you, you can try Dreamweaver. I just showed, put a link of a video under resources that shows you how to use it with Photoshop. So, so every day when I try to work on it, I forget what I. Oh, that's no problem. You just need to come in here other than Monday and Wednesday, is all I'm saying, because you won't get it done during class time. If I have plenty of time, and like usually if my parents drop me off earlier, uh -huh. and if your door is open, I can be able to come over and work on it. Yeah, even if this door is not.